Marconi, hope this banging on my door thing doesn't become a habit. Like asking me for the rent every month. Hicks, I can hear you in there. Open up right now or I'll break down the door. Hey, Mr. Marconi, look, I I'm really sorry about yesterday, you know. Why? What the hell did you do yesterday? Well, you know, I left you waiting here in the hallway and then I went to, you know. Hicks. If I had to see you on Sundays, too, my life just wouldn't be worth living. Wait, what? Are you telling me today's Monday? Knock it off, jerk! You won't get me with the amnesia trick this time. Mr. Marconi, I think you're getting delirious. What are you talking about? Listen, you don't seem to remember that yesterday was Monday. You came by, we exchanged pleasantries and shared our hopes and dreams. Then I left you standing in the hallway for hours and I snuck through the fire escape. Hicks! No, please, let me finish. The fire escape collapsed and nearly killed me. I probably got who knows what from a bum and last but not least, I saw my best friend's body au gratin inside his own oven. So yeah, it was a pretty memorable Monday. Listen! And you! You're so full of spite you've come back here at the same time to torture me again? Are you planning on pummeling my door every day? Because if you are, I might be forced to put an end to it. I've got boatloads of cash, and that should buy me some pretty unsavory friends who'll be happy to put an end to your little visits. Look, son, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm worried about you. Last night, you came back drunk again. I didn't say anything because I refused to work on Sundays. But now, I really think we should have a little talk. I'm all ears. Okay, first, I'm fed up with your stupid jokes, Hicks. You know that fire escape has been broken for a long time. And honestly, I don't care if you had something to do with it. Broken for a long time? Are you sure? Second, I'm so sorry about your friend. I heard on the news that they found his body this morning. This morning? And third, what do you mean you got boatloads of cash? Uh, forget what I said. I I'm still kind of drowsy here. Then today? Today, you owe me three months. And I want my money now. You sure you're not just fooling around? Do I look like I'm kidding? I don't know, Mr. Marconi. You always have that animal look about you. But today I'd say there's something different. Did you get a tan or is that a new haircut? I mean... Enough already. Give me my money now or I promise you, you won't be getting out of this apartment alive. Okay, here's your stinking money. For real? You mean this is actual, real money? No, it's fantasy world money. If you stop believing it, it'll disappear. Okay, okay, it's just that, uh, yeah, I wasn't really expecting to get paid. Especially not three months just like that. These aren't photocopy, right? Because you know it wouldn't be the first time. Ah, uh, have a little faith in me, Mr. Marconi. If I want to, I can get anything I need. And I don't have to scam any old ladies this time. God only knows what you did to get so much money, but I'm certainly gonna keep it. Yeah, yeah, good for you. So would you mind leaving me alone now? I know you're a little over the hill and I understand you're so confused you don't even know what day it is. But me, on the other hand, I've got things to do, so just run along. Do what you want, Hicks. But remember, I won't tolerate any more holdups with the rent. I'm warning you. And I'm ignoring you, but whatever. We'll see what happens next month. Don't push your luck. Hello? Are you Mr. Randall Hicks? Yep, speaking. Well, this is Sergeant Joseph Kramer from the police department. You need to come to Mr. Matthew Griffin's apartment ASAP. Why? You want to insult me in person? If you're not here in an hour, an arrest warrant will be issued. Did I leave something at Matt's apartment yesterday? What the hell are you talking about? What do you know about this? Look, I don't know what kind of game you're playing, but you better come here right now or you'll be spending the night in the cells where you'll come to be known as Susan. It's your choice. Uh, the Susan thing again? I thought this time it would be Bridget or Evelyn or whomever else. I'll be waiting. I hope I don't have to come looking for you. Don't worry, Sergeant. I'm on my way.
Hey, what's up, Sally? How you doing today? Shut your hole. Shut your stinking hole. Hey, what did I do? Oh, yeah. You never do anything. Randall Hicks. God, I'm sick of you. Get out of here. Calm down, Sally. We'll get over this. This can't be happening to me. What am I going to do now? We already paid for the wedding. I can't believe it. What am I going to do? What the hell am I going to do now? Relax. Everything's going to be all right. What? Are you kidding me? Well, that's what people say in this kind of situation, right? Get out. Seriously, just leave me alone. There's a cop waiting for you in the kitchen, and he doesn't look happy. Did he mention what he wanted? No, but he thinks you had something to do with this, and honestly, I do too. W well, you're wrong. I mean, mindless vandalism is more my thing. You know that. You disgust me. Why? Because of what you did. What did I do? Read the note and you'll know. What note? Matt's suicide note. Oh, that note. Oh, okay. Here's a tip. Learn to control that raging anger, okay? I'll see you around. Raging anger? Raging anger? Yes. Maybe that's what this is. Holy fuck, man! I wasn't expecting that! And what were you expecting? Freshly baked apple pie? Ha! <laughs> Good one, Ned. Well, maybe not apple pies, but I was expecting something baked. Are you Mr. Randall Hicks? In person? Good. I want to make sure I got the right guy. Sure. Wait, what? You heard me. I can see right through you, Mr. Hicks. Hey, don't you know it's rude to judge people by their looks? Oh, look, we got ourselves a funny guy here. You think this is funny? Huh, funny guy? I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, on one hand, I'm sorry about Matt, again. But on the other hand, you know, seeing his torso right there on the floor covered in blood, I mean, that, that, that's just a whole new feeling. I don't know how to categorize it, but I'd say, I mean, it's kind of fun. Yeah, definitely. Excuse me. You're sorry about Matt... Again? What do you mean by that? Oh, uh, nothing. It's it's just that he got lost once in the, uh, amusement park, and he got really scared, but it was, uh, nothing some monster-sized cotton candy couldn't fix. Okay, let's get to the point already. How did you know that the body belongs to Matthew Griffin? Let's just say I've got this feeling I've been in this exact same situation before. So, was your friend also dismembered back then? No, he was sort of burnt alive that time. Look, maggot, you better tell me everything you know, or there'll be consequences. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm sorry, it's just that my day isn't going quite like I thought it would. You don't say. So how did you think it would go? Well, I don't know, but I wasn't expecting it to be this confusing, I, and, and I expected a Tuesday. A uh, Tuesday? Are you sure there isn't anything else you'd like to say? As sure as today is Monday. Because it is Monday, right? Right. How did you know, Mr. Griffin? Uh, we grew up together. But, but, but I, I, I swear, I, I didn't steal his robo-calculator. I, I, I don't even know how it got into my toy box. I swear. You seem hesitant, boy. You shouldn't steal from your friends. That's just not right. I told you, I didn't steal anything. You're giving yourself away, you fool. Not only do I know that you're hiding something, but now I know it has something to do with stealing. And by that dumb look on your face, I'd say it's something you do quite a lot. Something impulsive, right? No, you're wrong. I, I didn't say any of that. We grew up together and we were very good friends. End of story. So, childhood friends, huh? Interesting. Yes, that's it. Is that all? Yes, that's all. I want to go now. Not so fast. I want to know exactly where you were and what you were doing when our friend here decided to redecorate the walls with his guts. Well, uh, I mean, it's, it's a little complicated. Well, it, it's funny, actually. Oh, really? So, tell me. I love funny stories. You see, 
I did a lot of stuff yesterday. It was a crazy day, you know, but then I woke up and none of it had happened. I, I mean, it, it did happen, but not yesterday. It happened today, but it wasn't the same today. You understand? No, I don't. And that wasn't funny. So I'll just ask again, what did you do last night? Is this a hidden camera show? Does it look like it is? I don't know, but it'd be a relief. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but this is not a goddamn joke. I know there's more. It's written all over your face. Uh, no. It's just my what a bore face. And if we're done here, I'd like to leave now. I have a lot of stuff to do, you know? Not so fast, Allison. This isn't over yet. <laughs> oh, so now it's Allison. Really? You don't like it? Then sue me. Oh, come on. Let me read that stupid note and let's get this over with. Go ahead. You can read it. But I warn you, you don't come off very well. Oh, and get your ass back here when you're done. I just found another chunk. Oh, man. That blender works like a charm. Yeah. I just ordered myself one on the internet. Oh, please, show some respect. I'm sure he didn't know what he was doing. He knew what he was doing, all right. This was clearly a suicide. But how is it possible? Boy, we know what we're doing. And how can you be so sure? First of all, the pattern of the blood spatter on the wall. Take a look at the angle. That shows it was him, easing himself into the blender little by little. But have you ever watched Dexter? Well, we are kind of like it. Dude, don't put it like that. We're not psychos. And how did he manage to do this on his own? Kid, there are several technical details you wouldn't understand. But the best evidence is the suicide note he wrote. Oh. Maybe somebody forced him to do it. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Mainly because he made a video with his cell phone. And what a phone. 600 megapixel camera. 6G. Triple three-dimensional multi-touch screen. Fine, fine. I gotta go. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The unknown future rolls toward us. I face it for the first time with a sense of hope because if a machine, a Terminator, can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too. I want to thank Randall for each and every one of the selfish deeds he's ever done. Thanks to you, I have finally opened my eyes. Now, you have taken away the most beautiful thing I ever had. Thus, I don't fear death anymore. I want to thank you as well, Mother. Thank you for renewing my kitchen. All the appliances are of the highest quality. But what I regret the most is leaving you, Sally. You're the best thing that ever happened to me in this carousel we call life. I'm sorry for doing this to you, but now you must go on. Run away from this madness and don't ever look back. Don't let Randall drag you over to the dark side. That's all that matters. Don't fall into his trap. Just one more thing. Watching John with the machine, it was suddenly... So clear, the Terminator would never stop. It would never leave him, it would never hurt him, never shout at him, or get drunk and hit him, or say it was too busy to spend time with him. It would always be there, and it would die to protect him. Of all the would-be fathers who came and went over the years, this thing, this machine, was the only one who measured up. In an insane world, it was the sanest choice. Sincerely, W.W. Wow, I don't know what to say. Suicides aside, pure poetry. I still have the image in my head, both of them playing around while the mother stands back watching them, knife in her hand. Meh, there's a tear in my eye. Please, can I go now? I gave you my number already, so if you need me again, just call me. Hey, hey, what's the rush? You have to understand, I have people to push into suicide, evidence to destroy, I'm really busy. You're not taking this seriously, kid. You're gonna be sorry.
Did you just call me kid? My god, I'm welling up. Nope, wait a second. Yeah, that was just guess. Get out of here, kid. But don't leave town. We might need you again. I'll be staring at my phone just like a lovesick high school girl. You like that, don't you? Out! Now! Just what the hell is going on here? Is this some kind of a joke? Because I, I, I really don't get it. Okay, let's review the facts. I'm reliving the same day all over. I was never a good student, but I don't think that's a normal thing to happen. At least not this time of the year. Also, I'm the only one that seems to realize it. Except for that bum, so if I lost my mind? Mom always said that spending so many hours playing that game with the Italian plumber would only wreck my brain, but I never thought it would come to this. But yet, some things I did yesterday remain unaltered. I still have the money I made by selling the ring, and the fire escape is still broken. This is really weird. Maybe that stupid ring is the key. I think I gotta get it back, and quick! Hey, don't look at me like that. We'll figure it out. Good idea. Good old Phil will help me out. Technically, he didn't fire me yet. Hey, look who's here. I didn't think you had the guts to come back after what you did yesterday. Yesterday? Go on, tell me. Did you really think that coming to the workplace on a Sunday and completely wasted was a good idea? I'm sorry? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, shut up! I saw the tapes from the security cameras. I just can't believe you brought a donkey into my office and without telling anyone. I have seen things nobody should ever see, you know. What the hell was that woman doing to that poor animal? Listen, pal, her name is Candy and she's a total pro. That's enough, Hex. I'm gonna make sure this never happens again. You are fired. You can't fire me. At least let me explain. Sure I can. You have cheated me, you have disrespected me, and more importantly, you have made me lose my faith in humanity. That donkey started kicking like crazy, and it broke the window. And thank God he didn't wind up dead of an overdose or something. I just had to spend the entire morning cleaning up the shit that animal left. Oh, and don't get me started on my safe. Wide open. And my precious super hot chick catalog is now totally ruined and smells like tuna. What the hell were you thinking? Do you have any idea how expensive it was? I, uh, well... Go on. Explain yourself. Um, wasn't I supposed to deliver something to the koala convention? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now it seems like the little louse wants to work. Well, I am sorry. You are too late. You are fired. But I'm... Get out of my face. Wow, I just keep getting better. Although it sucks, the only thing I remember is Sally and Matt's cheesy wedding shower. Partying in the office must have been really wild. I gotta get my hands on those tapes. I think there's something in there. Let's see what's behind mystery box number three. Ow, oh, a gross rotten lemon. Just great.
for something in particular? Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm looking for a ring that I brought here, I think. You think? Well, it's complicated. Do you remember seeing me in here yesterday? Well, no. Yesterday we were closed. It was Sunday, remember? Sure. May I take a look at the rings you have on sale? No, you may not. Why not? I thought the customer was always right. The guy who said that must have been such a loser. Please, I need that ring desperately. And this concerns me how? Because I need to get it back. Oh, by the way, did I mention I have a lot of cash in my pocket? And I mean a lot. Why didn't you say so before? What did you have in mind? Well, it's, um, it's kind of a golden ring. Kind of simple. No inscriptions, no diamonds or anything. However, it radiates a mysterious aura that makes it unique and tempting. Does that sound familiar? Boy, I've only seen a ring like that once. But I didn't get it from you. I got it from a guy that turned out to be two midgets in disguise. Um, is it here? What, the midgets? No, not the midgets. The ring. Is the ring still here? No. Oh, crap. I sold it this morning. I'm sorry, but I got a really good offer. How can I get my hands on that ring? You can't. How are you gonna buy it if the ring's not here anymore? So that's how you do business? Yesterday you were totally hung up on that ring, and today you sell it to the first guy that walks through the door? I'm disappointed in you. Listen, I'm only gonna say this one more time. Yesterday, the store was closed, okay? So enough about that. Besides, don't you think it's odd that you're complaining that I sold a ring when that's what I do for a living? And didn't you say that you're the one who sold the aforementioned ring in the first place? Kind of. Well, then cut it out already. Can you at least tell me who bought it? Negative. Company policy. Company? This place looks like an old storage unit. And I saw your license expired in 1968. I bet you weren't even born then. Hey, how would you feel if I went to your house and told you it was a pigsty? Which I'm sure it is. But that's not the point. The point is that you should show more respect. I cannot divulge that kind of information. Store policy. End of story. Well then, that's it for me. Oh, come on! This is a matter of life and death! I'm really sorry, but there's nothing I can do. A human life is at stake. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Human life is overrated. If it was an exotic animal's life, maybe I'd give it a thought. Okay, pick an animal and I'll make up a story. I'm sorry, buddy, but my store policy overrides any kind of life, even that of an exotic animal. Fine. Listen, kid, I keep record of all the transactions here in this notebook. I'd love to be able to tell everybody who bought what, but that's got me into trouble before. I get a lot of women who want their wedding dresses back, nerds trying to rescue their comic book collection, even cops who are looking for evidence or weapons that were used to commit crimes. So I'm sure you'll understand that I just can't give out that information. Okay, I'll find a way. So, dice or no dice? It's always dice. Who do you think you're talking to? percent satisfied with the results. I hope it's as soft as you say. Like a to you. The police have searched the place already. You won't find any clues in there. What makes you think that's the reason I'm here? I was just gonna steal something. Steal something? 
thought he was your best friend. Well, I don't think he'll mind, given the circumstances. You're disgusting. Yeah, I get that. seem to open it. I should have never quit the gym. That's Matt's mug. Hmm, there's still some booze in it. Ooh, strong booze. The alcohol fixed it. Well, well, well. If it isn't the business bum. How do you like my office? My decorator said it should have a more urban, casual look. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Very tasteful, but... Oh, I just remembered I need to do anything else. Bye.
a matchbox almost empty high quality red looks pretty good you want me to talk to that makes no sense I don't think it's wise to go in there Dr. Con I don't. Uh, you better start a We all struggle to define ourselves, to live our lives with some sense of balance, with one foot in the past and the other reaching for an uncertain future. No, oh, I am starting to get really tired of all these lame TV show life lessons. Why can't you just say something coherent for once? I mean, I know you're a bum and all, and sometimes you just need to yell stuff at people, but I'm sure you know more than you're letting on. I know a lot of things. Our yesterdays are like a string of pearls, unbroken, unchanging. But if we could change our past, would that also change who we are? Do you know what you should do? You should just, um... I don't know, switch channels. All those sci-fi shows are seriously messing up your brain. Even more, uh, I mean. Oh, yeah? Look who's talking. The guy that can't even perceive the dangerous time-space alterations that are happening around him. Look, pal, I don't care about your curse. But be careful with what you touch out there, okay? Don't say I didn't warn you. See? Now you're talking again about curses and space-time continuums. Maybe you just need more fiber in your diet. We have always been fascinated with the prospect of renewal. Built into the very fabric of our self-conscious is the desire for resurrection. A rebirth of body and soul. A second chance. Uh, are you done with your cheap philosophy? Okay. Why are you the only one who understands what's happening to me? Because I've been there, boy. Listen, everything you touch gets marked, cursed like you are, doomed to repeat itself and yet to remain unchanged in this world and in any other world. Right here and right now, everything you touch keeps rewriting the past so the present we know doesn't get torn apart. A present that's the same and yet different at the same time. My God, I didn't get any of that. All in good time, my friend. If you need more clues, just go back to the place where it all began. Clayton's? You're the only one who knows. Okay, I'll stop by as soon as I can. Oh, I just remembered I need to do anything else. Bye.